Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Dawson. In this video, we're going to talk about battle fees in five minutes or less and what they do for Cardano to allow people to pay for things in, you know, pay for transaction fees, not in ADA. Okay, so what kind of use cases does this have and how does it work? Let's say popular game Fortnite is now on Cardano or Cardano has its own Fortnite variant. Fortnite has the in-game currency of V-Bucks, okay? So let's say a user has V-Bucks. They don't hold any ADA. They don't even know what ADA is. They don't want to touch ADA, right? They have V-Bucks and they want to buy a skin, which is an NFT. They're going to take V-Bucks and pay for this skin. Inside of that transaction, there will be a transaction fee that they're also going to pay in V-Bucks. This is what Babel Fees does. It allows you to pay any transaction in Cardano native tokens or native tokens on the Cardano network. The problem is that the Cardano L1 only accepts ADA for fees. So every time a block is closed, all the transaction fees are in ADA and they have to go to the L1. When we have Babel fees, we have people paying for NFTs and V-Bucks, paying transaction fees and V-Bucks. How do those get to ADA to pay the L1 at the end of the block? That's what Babel fees does. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. IOHK put out this really, really in-depth video. It's 22 minutes long, so we're not going to cover the whole thing. That's why I'm making this video to, to shorten it down a bit. But I will put this, this video in the description if you want to go watch it. I highly recommend it. But they put out two slides that are really important to look at here. Um, so we have this first slide that, oh, sorry. We have this first slide right here that talks about the initial transaction that happens. So just like our scenario, we have somebody with a game coin that's willing to trade someone with swords, okay? So they don't hold any ADA, but we have Alice on the left side that has five swords, and we have Bob on the right side with 30 game coins. They wanna make a transaction of swords for game coins. They're playing some game, they don't hold any ADA. The L1 still has a five ADA fee, but nobody has ADA. So they're gonna pay this fee in game coins. We can see right here, we have a one-on-one -on -one exchange rate of game coin to ADA. So Bob is gonna pay this five ADA fee in five game coins. Um, we can see that this is after the transaction happens. This is what Alice will receive on the left, and this is what Bob will receive on the right. But we have this liability. So Bob paid for this five ADA fee in five game coins, but the Cardano L1 doesn't accept game coins. It only accepts ADA. So currently, this transaction is not closed. There's a five ADA debt position that has to get covered in order for the L1 to accept this transaction and accept the block. Slide two will have the way that this thing gets closed. How does our liability debt position get closed within the limited time frame of 20 seconds? Now, block producers, um, whether they're like stake pool operators, and then the users who are committing these transactions will have to have a spot market to where they can see kind of what fees are being traded and who, like what each block producer is willing to trade um, X amount for X amount, right? So there has to be sort of like a DEX system for these battle fees to work. But if we ignore all that and assume that that's covered and you know it works, how does this liability position get covered? Well, someone is going to see the spot market, going to see you know what a block producer accepts and what kind of open positions there are to close within each block. So we'll have a person here like Calvin who has 15 ADA. Calvin is willing to accept game coins for ADA. So Calvin's going to go ahead and take his 15 ADA and pay off this five ADA transaction fee. Now, when Calvin pays that off, he's going to go ahead and get the five game coins that the Cardano L1 doesn't accept. So down here, we can see that Calvin now has five ADA and five game coins. Calvin lost five ADA because of this transaction that had to happen but he covered this transaction. And so now the whole block has no deposition and all of it's being paid by five ADA because Calvin went ahead and took these five game coins off of the ledger. Calvin essentially took the responsibility of closing the deposition. There's no more liabilities. The blockchain is all evened out. The, the ledger is all evened out for Cardano. And this block can then be posted to the Cardano L1 without ever having to have like debts and liabilities on the L1. IOHK states that they don't want that. They just want to have transactions to be paid. And if they cannot be paid, if the block can't be closed, the block will not, you know, it, the transactions just won't go through. That right there is the real quick version of what a Babel fee is. You have two parties that are making a transaction that don't hold any ADA, but they want to transact on the Cardano ecosystem. The Cardano L1 only accepts ADA for transactions. 
but but Babel fees allows for people to pay for their transactions in Cardano native tokens that are not ADA. How does that native token then get switched to ADA so that the L1 can be evened out before a block closes? Well, we have other people willing to transact these fees, willing to cover these debt positions right here in, in, in return for these tokens in return for their ADA. So somebody, every block, you know, block producers are going to have to have a system to where they're like accepting certain transactions, but also having other transactions come in to cover the depositions of the non ADA transaction fees. So this is all going to have to work via a spot market and like a DEX type system of swapping and showcasing what, what transactions need to be closed so that, you know, users on Cardano who have ADA and want to trade ADA for their tokens can make these things happen. Um, that is what a Babel fee is. Babel fees are paying for transactions in non-ADA tokens and then having a debt position within a block, but that debt position needs to be closed every 20 seconds before the block is closed in order for the transactions and the block to go to Cardano. If it doesn't happen, it won't accept it because the IOHK states that they do not want debt positions on the ledger. They want to keep the ledger simple and clean and not um, you know, obstructed with debt positions and liabilities. If you appreciate that 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 video on Babel fees, please drop us a like and a subscribe. I will put this video in the description. I highly recommend you watch it. They go over a lot more technical things than I'm going to go over in this video because they just understand more about what Babel fees are and they are the real engineers creating this stuff. Um, so go ahead and watch that video. Drop IOHK a subscribe too. I appreciate you watching the video. Hope everyone has a good day. God bless and we'll see you in the next one.